We're glad to have you. Now, Visualint describes itself as a company with patent-pending technology, allowing it to see color that is otherwise invisible to humans. Can you give us a general overview of the company and the technology, please? Uh, absolutely. My pleasure. Uh, let me give you a foundation in terms of color. Uh, you and I, Don, and all human beings have three color receptors in our eyes, red, blue, and green. Uh, interestingly enough, a shrimp has, seven, has 17 color receptors. Probably didn't know that. And a bumblebee has 32 color receptors. Our Vigilant technology has 700 color receptors. So we see color that humans can see, but we also see color at a very detailed level and also outside the humanly visible portion of the spectrum. So very, very powerful technology. We've been building this technology in the lab with our world-class scientists out of the University of Washington for several years and are now ready to head into the marketplace. Well, now, Ron, you've described your technology as being like a barcode scanner or a fingerprint reader that can recognize color with great precision. Now, why is that important? What our technology allows you to do is do things that bar barcodes can't do. A barcode, for example, can't differentiate between a counterfeit $100 bill and a real $100 bill. Uh, or uh, a, bar a barcode scanner can't uh, differentiate between a real pharmaceutical and a counterfeit uh, pharmaceutical. So what, what we provide with our visual technology is another layer of, a, of authentication, number, uh, another layer of proof, if you will, so that we know that the item is what it purports to be. I would assume this technology has applications in not only the security field, but in others as well. Absolutely. Well, I, I touched upon one a moment ago uh, when I mentioned pharmaceutical counterfeiting, and that is in, in a way security. It involves health. Interestingly enough, last year there was $300 billion of counterfeiting in pharmaceuticals, so that's an application. Uh, a pharmaceutical in many ways is a branded product. Uh, you want to know that that pharmaceutical is Lipitor, if it's really what it purports to be. The same could be said for other branded products, so it has great applicability in the branded product arena and, and some other categories as well. Uh, it's a diagnostic tool. So, for example, uh, there are medical diagnostic applications, applications in terms of environmental diagnostics, agricultural diagnostics. So, really, it's transformative foundation technology that has applications in a lot of different arenas. You know, Ron, counterfeit goods and products cost consumers $250 billion last year, and that's just in the U.S. alone. Can you tell us how your technology can be utilized to detect counterfeiting? Well, yes. Uh, for example, uh, uh, what, we, what we see with our technology, color at the photon level, we really like to call it nature's fingerprint. So we can see identifiers on a product or on an object that other people can't see. In fact, what we like to say is the counterfeiter can't counterfeit what they can't see. And, and because we're looking at things at such an exacting level and seeing things outside the humanly visible portion of the spectrum, we, we really we really get in the way of the counterfeiter. He can't counterfeit those things that he can't see. That's true. Now, with respect to national and international security, you would also be able to confirm the validity of IDs, say, like driver's licenses and passports. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Well, yes. I mean, there again, uh, we, we, can, we can put a mark on, an, on a document. We can literally put an invisible barcode on a document. If you think about that, we were talking about barcoding technology earlier. And you can see a barcode. Uh, we can literally create a, a code, a, a small dot, for example, or a barcode that you couldn't see, that you could only see with our device, with our, with our vigilant technology. So uh, there, there are ways that we can get around the, the, the counterfeiter's creativity. And as you know, uh, there's a lot of counterfeiting that's state-sponsored by rogue nations around the world, and they have very sophisticated technology, but they will not be able to counterfeit what they can't see. You know, while the scope of the myriad applications for visual and sensing technology are certainly impressive, Ron, uh, sometimes cost barriers can make it difficult to penetrate certain markets. For a, um, for a healthcare provider or security entity, what kind of investment would be necessary to implement your technology? The, the form factor is very flexible. It could be a very small device that's very inexpensive to produce. It's, it, we, can, we can provide it to the ultimate consumer. At a, at a very low cost as compared to competitive products. Uh, so we have, a, we think, a significant cost advantage. We think, it, we, we think we have something that's certainly competitive to barcodes and RFID and any other identifier you want to talk about. Uh, or, for example, in the healthcare arena, our scientists today are, are working on, on a, a device that uh, could, for example, um, 
you know, be a diagnostic tool for a skin cancer, let's say, because we can look at, at changes at the photon level. Uh, we, can, we can create a, a device like that to make it cost competitive and uh, relatively inexpensive. Well, now, Ron, the company announced late last year your intention to acquire an Oregon-based company called TransTech Systems. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your strategy here and what attracted you to TransTech in particular? Well, our strategy is to go out and, and look for best-of-breed companies that are, are in the channel of distribution, talking to customers, talking to customers who are interested in adopting interesting new technologies. And in that search, we found TransTech. Uh, they're the first acquisition. Uh, candidly, we intend to have uh, additional acquisitions and over the next couple of years acquire up to 35 to $50 million of revenue from this channel of distribution that we're acquiring. Uh, these are companies that are very sophisticated when it comes to security and authentication, have deep relationships at the government level, uh, state and federal, and, and uh, have wonderful relationships with their consumers, their customers. Do you expect the company to have further acquisitions to be part of your overall growth strategy? Well, uh, we envision over the next 18 months, two years, additional acquisitions, uh, growing the company to the 35 to $50 million level. You know, healthcare and security are two of the most watched industry sectors as we now enter the second decade of the 21st century. Uh, the company must feel it's in the right place at the right time. Uh, absolutely. Uh, of course, we've been working hard on this for, for years, and, uh, you know, uh, luck is often a function of a lot of preparation and a lot of hard work. So we've been at this for a long time in that development phase, just now getting ready to come into the market to create products for consumers and with the TransTech acquisition and others, expand our reach into the security and authentication marketplace. Uh, so, you know, this isn't an overnight thing. We've been at this, uh, uh, Don, for a long time. And Ron, why is this a good time right now for folks to take a closer look at your company? You know, when you have a profound technology such as ours and, and you, you're ready to emerge from the lab to go out into the world to now begin to create products for consumers, um, and at the same time, uh, this acquisition of TransTech and other acquisitions to follow. So we're really at a tipping point, and uh, I think it's an exciting time for the company. We're having a lot of fun, and uh, we're looking forward to, pre to creating tremendous value for our consumers, our customers, and our shareholders over the next several years.